Well, good morning everyone and welcome again to the Tabernacle Baptist Church and to our morning devotion. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we count it a privilege and a blessing uh, to be found in your presence this morning. We thank you that we can come humbly but also boldly to the throne of grace, not through any merit of our own, but through the wonderful uh, love and grace and sacrifice of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who died for each of us on the cross of Calvary, that we might be saved, redeemed uh, from the punishment of sin, which is death and eternal separation from you. But this morning uh, we have confidence in our hearts uh, because we know that Jesus conquered death, he rose from the grave, uh, he uh, was seen by many before ascending into heaven, <clears throat> and he is interceding even now for each and every one of us at your right hand in heaven. And so we thank you for the living Lord Jesus. And we thank you for the day that he knocked on the door of our hearts, and uh, we were able to accept him uh, into our hearts and our lives as our personal Lord and Saviour. It's been a wonderful journey, those of us who have walked with him down through many years. And so our prayer is this morning that whoever is listening uh, or watching this particular devotion uh, will indeed feel the presence of the Lord in their hearts and lives. Forgive us for our sin, forgive us for our uh, many um, failures, um, and for the times when we have turned our back on you, when we should have sought to draw closer to you. But you are always faithful. You are always with us. And we thank you for that. So come with us now, because we ask these things, as always, in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you noticed that uh, during uh, the times of uh, COVID re restrictions, uh, that we are, have uh, had to wait a much longer for things. Um, if you were waiting to go to the bank now, they only allow you in one at a time and you have to queue, uh, keeping social distance, of course. Uh, and that means everything takes just a little bit longer. It's the same with shops. And even if you go... Uh, into a restaurant or into a tea garden now. Uh, you have to wait that little bit longer. Um, waiting is some, sometimes a thing which um, annoys us. Although we are said to be in the UK good people in terms of queuing, uh, but nevertheless we all get a little bit irritated if we have to wait. Well this morning I want to speak about waiting um, and it's more to do with waiting for the Lord, waiting for the Lord and uh, particularly I want us to think and meditate upon uh, that uh, verse in verse 20 of Psalm 33 which says we wait in hope for the Lord, he is our help and our shield. Now uh, this is a psalm of praise, Psalm 33, and uh, we uh, uh, think that David wrote it, although we're not absolutely sure about that. And the psalm basically calls upon those who believe in God uh, to praise him. And then it tells us why we should praise God. Um, we should praise him because he is a just God, he's a good God, he uh, is truthful with us. Um, and uh, everything that he promises will come true. Uh, secondly, we should praise him for his power, um, particularly because he is our creator. And we should uh, praise him for his sovereignty because he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's no one greater uh, than God. And 
Uh, finally, we should praise him for the huge blessings which he bestows upon us, um, uh, his chosen people in, 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 in the context of this psalm, which was Israel. Uh, and he encourages um, them to trust in him again and again. So this Psalm 33 encapsulates how a devout follower of God should wait upon him. And then we come to the verse uh, which we are looking at, Psalm uh, verse 20, which says, We wait in hope uh, for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Um, it's uh, one of those um, verses which is often quoted. Um, in fact, uh, the Psalms is a very popular um, book in uh, Scripture, as we all know. Um, uh, the more we learn how to wait upon the Lord, the better we will serve him in this life. There are two reasons given here as to why Christians should wait upon the Lord. He is our help and he is our shield. Now, before looking at these two things, let us answer the question, what does it mean to wait upon the Lord? Well, to wait upon the Lord means that we do not make decisions in life without first seeking God's will in those decisions. Uh, to seek God's will, we must go to the word of God and pray. Uh, uh, to wait on the Lord means to do God's will, not our own will. To wait on the Lord means to do God's will in his timing and not our own timing. The word here that is translated wait means to tarry. Or to long for and this is the uh, reason that many times Christians fail to wait on the Lord a person has something they long for and so they go after it this is why the philosophies of the world are so contrary to the Word of God the world teaches that it is a good thing for a man or woman to have a strong will in uh, pursuing the desires uh, of his or her own heart. You know, both Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, and uh, chapter 16, verse 25 say, There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The philosophy, philosophy of the world, which says, Follow your heart, is the wrong philosophy because just as um, we find in Jeremiah chapter 17 it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it I the Lord search the heart I try the reins even to give every man according to his way and according to the fruit of his doings and then in Psalm 37, verse 4, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Waiting on the Lord is part of the Christian life. Waiting on the Lord is serving Jesus. Well, the best example of this is in regards to the promises of God that have yet to be fulfilled. We are waiting on the Lord uh, for Jesus to return. We are waiting on the Lord Jesus for the full redemption of our bodies. We are waiting on the Lord Jesus for the day he will take us home uh, to heaven to be with him. So we must not throw away our opportunities to serve Jesus. Even in this life we must serve Jesus. We must learn to wait upon him. It is important, isn't it, to wait upon the Lord. I love the uh, verse 31 in Isaiah 40. It says, 
but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not wait. If you or I fail to wait upon God today, then tomorrow is a new opportunity to learn to wait upon him and the Lord Jesus Christ. Waiting upon God is probably one of the greatest challenges in the Christian life. It is a day by day challenge. Uh, we will not wake up on one day and be able to say, uh, I have waited upon God successfully and there's no more waiting to do. The Christian life is about waiting upon God. Jesus leads us and we follow. We who have turned from our sins to Jesus, pick up our cross daily and follow him. In fact, another way of saying to wait upon God is to say, as in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Well, this is the reason most people do not wait on God, because they are not even seeking his will. If you have never repented of your sins and turned to Jesus Christ for salvation, then you have never learned to wait on God. Forgiveness of sins in Jesus by grace through faith is the beginning of waiting on God because the full redemption from sin does not come in this life but will come when Christ returns to take his children from the earth. Waiting on God begins at salvation. The psalmist says, he is our help and our shield. To learn to wait on God, remember these two, two, these two truths. Jesus is our help and Jesus is our shield. Uh, when we think of him as our help, um, to bring the meaning of the word, we should consider its use in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, which says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him, for, for him. a partner, in other words. The word help meet is the same word used here in Psalm 33, verse 20. Uh, he is our help. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. Uh, that's the second uh, thing. He is our shield. In the New Testament, concerning the armor of God, it says in Ephesians chapter 6, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The devil is going to, to attack you and me. If you trust in Jesus and cling to the promises of God, Jesus will not only be your help and your partner, he will be your shield and you will be able to successfully wait on him. I can wait on Jesus because he is my helper and he is my shield. Waiting on God means also waiting for him to fulfill his promises. Waiting on God means seeking to do God's will in his timing. You know, God has a way of working in men and women's hearts. God prepares men and women for each other. God prepares us today to face tomorrow. He opens one door, and we've all found this, but he shuts another. God is the one who gives and he takes away opportunity. 
do the practical things of life and learn to wait on God. Be faithful in the little things and you will be faithful in the much bigger things. Moses was 80 years old when he led the children of Israel from Egypt. Abraham was 100 years old when God fulfilled the promise given to him and Sarah by giving them a child. It says in Genesis chapter 15 verse 1, After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding, uh, thy exceeding great reward. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. If you have never learned to wait on God, if you have never repented of your sins and turned to Jesus for salvation, you can do so now. And he can become your help, your shield, and your exceeding great rewards. There is an opportunity here for you. If you believe that Jesus has been talking to you even through these simple words this morning, why don't you invite him into your heart and into your life? You can do so very simply. There's no magical formula, no special knowledge that you need. We have to be like little children putting our complete trust in our Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you pray this prayer with me now? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Do you know if you prayed that prayer this morning, well, God bless you. It's a wonderful day when Jesus comes into your heart. And we can sing his praises this morning if that's the case for you. I would always urge, if you have made that commitment, to Jesus, to tell someone, uh, preferably the minister or one of the leaders of your local gospel preaching church. And as we always say, if you're in the Newbridge area, well, please contact our pastor, Pastor Peter Cho, or one of the leaders, and they will be delighted to help you and to nurture you in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being with us this morning. God bless you all. Amen.